Good, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's symposium. I'd like to introduce uh, the very basic framework of today's uh, discussion and lectures, and uh, afterwards, um, I'll be doing, briefly introducing the first panel, and my colleague Razwan will introduce the afternoon sessions. But uh, let me begin first and foremost by making a general theoretical argument, or at least a set of questions. It is the question of our time. How do we attain autonomy as we increasingly grow dependent on technologies that calculate, optimize, and rationalize life into efficient living? If modernity's promise was to advance human agency with its potential to remake the world toward autonomy, then how do we explain automation of life with the invention of new technologies that increasingly interpret us through self-tracking that claim objectivity of pragmatic significance? In his famous, or some say infamous, qu The Question Concerning Technology, published in 1954, the late German philosopher Martin Heidegger warned against the threat of what he understood as modern technology. Not in its material or appa apparatus form, but in the consolidation of a mode of existence in terms of what he called inframing that pertains to the matter that humans make reality into a standing reserve, a reality that is ready to be recalled in a quest for mastery over nature. What is interesting to note here is that Heidegger's now famous 1954 study on technology primarily focused on manufactured and industrial technologies. The hydroelectric plant on the Rhine River was the biggest example that was the, the famous example that he brought up in his essay. But the 1950s and also 60s also marked a new era of, of computer automation pioneered by Bletchley Park and Alan Turing that have now become a standard of our media, that is, computational systems. While war, without a doubt, was a site of experimentation for these new technologies, the post-war birth of computer automation essentially revolved around the capacity to control and direct movement from a distant, from a remote distance. The rise of computer networks was surely revolutionary, not just in terms of culture, but also infrastructure. Frederick Kettler, also another late German philosopher and media theorist, wrote, optical fiber networks soon will be connected. There's actually a picture component to this. I forgot. Here we go. How do we go forward? Here we go. That's Heidegger for the students here, and that's Kidler. Uh, soon people will be connected to a communication channel which can be used for any kind of media for the first time in history or for the end of history, end of quotation mark. And for the most part in our early 21st century, that communication channel is no longer the connected media systems of film, telephone, radio, which primarily Kittler was referring to, but convergence media networks of internets and mobile cell phones, shaping multiple and interacting media platforms that identify the so-called age of digital media. And yet after 60 years of Heidegger's essay on technology, the question still remains, what is the essence of our, our modern technology? In broad terms, how can we understand techno-science, in quotation marks, that is, scientific discourses and technological practices that are socially coded, historically situated, and sustained by material, non-human networks in the era of digital surveillance embedded in daily life? In an age when we have come not just to use but trust computational processes that inescapably shape our everyday life how can we rethink various spheres of life using a Weberian language here, that is economy, culture, religion, and of course, the political? And from a global South perspective, how could we understand the rise of technological regimes of computation in line with the growth of inequality and challenges of social justice around the world? In terms of politics, the 2016 US elections taught us that computational uh, politics is increasingly pushing its way into the political. Sorry, the computational is increasingly pushing its way into the political. An assemblage of social media practices, algorithmic driven computer programs known as bots, pervasively designed to do specific activities, 
which really uh, was not just about manipulating public opinion, but performatively shaping a perception of a politics, of a distinct kind of politics. Russian bots. Russian bots represented human software. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have no idea how that got in there. <laughs> Russian bots represented human software programs through platforms such as Facebook, such as Facebook, that mimic social media users to boost followers, create online communities with distinct self-enclosed opinions. I guess the question of our time is no longer if we are becoming cyborgs, but if you have ever been bots. Well, welcome to today's symposium, which promises to be a day, a dynamic day of discussion and thinking or rethinking about the question of technoscience. My name is Bob Akrahimi. For those that do not know me, I'm the director of the program for the study of religion and also the director of Third World Studies here at UCSD. Um, in terms of sponsors, I sincerely would like to thank, um, take this opportunity to thank our sponsor, co-sponsors. Uh, Program for the Civil Religion and Thermal Studies are the main sponsors, but uh, definitely I would like to take the chance to thank University of California Humanities Research Institute, Department of Literature, UC San Diego uh, Institu International Institute, and the Institute of Arts and Humanities. I particularly would like to thank Tanya Myers, the coordinator for, for the Program for the Civil Religion, for helping us organize the symposium. And it is impossible for me to not acknowledge my good friend and partner in crime, Razman Amir Nussi, for co-organizing the event. Um, the, the, the event is supposed to bring two different set of panels, three different set of panels together in a day-long session. The first panel of the symposium is meant to explore general themes related to the question of technoscience. The themes range from embodiment, culture, and more specifically to religion. Uh, for the afternoon session, I'm going to hand it to Razwan to explain the afternoon session. And after that, I'll come here, I'll come back to introduce our keynote speaker for the morning session. Thank you.